Peter, in this nobody goes to jail kind of Wall Street uh, world that we're living in, where the U.S. Justice Department could care less that uh, billions have have been stolen. I mean, literally billions have been stolen by Wall Street. And nobody goes jailed. I mean, the the civil fines are meaningless, and no, not one person, not one single person besides Bernie Madoff has gone to prison. Uh, Lloyd Blank, Blank Fink. I mean, you go on forever. You just name name it, and you there's there's some ugly story related to what they've done, but nobody has gone to prison because we have a Department of Justice that is run. It's run by the same lawyer. I mean, who who represented these guys before he became Attorney General? It, it's definitely a problem. I mean, we're missing teeth. We got an SEC that uh, doesn't have the sophistication, the manpower, the budget to oversee some of the uh, complex financial scams. And then when they do find something, they don't have the manpower to figure it out, even when it's dropped on their lap. But but isn't it significant that the person calling the shots, Eric Holder, used to represent all these guys? I mean, he represented these companies that are just, you know, they've clearly committed crimes. Bernie Madoff now is saying, hey, banks knew what I was doing. The agency recapture is a huge problem. You've got to go on both ways. I mean, for instance, David Becker, SEC general counsel, just went back into private practice. And uh, two weeks after he announced his leaving SEC as general counsel and director of policy, his uh, mother is named in one of the Bernie Madoff trustee claims trying to recoup her profits. And, I mean, the 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 relationships between – the uh, the DOJ, the SEC, and counsel for these huge, you know, multinational companies is uh, is a web. It's one of the reasons why you don't see a lot of heavy-handed uh, jail sentences in these scams. Is how about none? Yeah. How about no jails? We have a a different class of people that are, they're not. We can't incarcerate them. That's what we have here. The class of people that we can't incarcerate. Uh, went to Harvard, got MBAs, uh, you know, wear silk suits, silk ties, expensive shoes, expensive watches, make billions of dollars, and we can't throw them in jail, according to our Department of Justice. And Bernie Madoff is in jail now, and let's go back to where this all where this all goes. Bernie Madoff says, look, do you really think that I pulled off an $85 billion scam by myself, without the banks I was dealing with knowing about it? It's, what do you think, Peter? You're a specialist. You, you go back to this, and our investigation into this o- over the last two years is is absolutely incredible. And one of the reasons why you can tell right away, easiest that anybody could put their finger on, is look at his list of clients. And what's missing from his list of clients is what's telling. There are virtually no big banks from Wall Street as clients. They all knew. And why did they know? Because it's impossible to generate 13, 14% returns year in and year out. He had 4% of his monthly returns were negative over 15 years. It's impossible. Well, you have some people that have quietly tried to settle. I mean, you know, you've got, uh, you've got Swiss banks who've said you know, they settled. I mean, you know, why, why did that Swiss bank know about it? And these other banks that, I mean, obviously knew what was going on, uh, how, how are they able to say, well, we didn't? The Swiss bank is just, they're just smarter than we are? I mean, is that kind of, that, that's kind of what you have to believe. I mean, the, one, one of the whistleblowers said that he spent, in, in five or ten minutes, knew that this was impossible, and four or five hours of modeling had figured out that the size of his, of Madoff's hedge fund, that there was no way he could employ the strategy he said he was using with options because it would require that he purchase more options than were publicly available on a month to month basis. And he did it for sixteen years and the and, and all somebody and, and you could have modeled it. You do it all the time. You, you this is the kind of thing you do day to day. You know, you're top of the game where it comes to going after these thugs. Uh you know, it's what you do. And you can figure it out probably in a week what was happening. And here we have the biggest institutions in the world that for 16 years allowed Bernie Madoff to get away with it after this, after he'd already been reported to the SEC. Add that to it, right, Peter? Well, I mean, he hadn't, he hadn't just been reported once, and that's what's, that's what's incredible about this. There were submissions to the SEC on an annual basis starting back to 2000. 
where they had whistleblowers come into the SEC saying this is this is mathematically impossible what he's doing. There is a problem. They submitted data. They submitted analysis. Same thing with the state of New York. There was a a uh, a, 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 a truckload of data submitted saying this is this can't be. And there wasn't even a formal investigation opened in New York. And the same thing with the SEC. Year after year, they had submissions and they didn't do anything. And, uh, and and the problem is is because you've got people that don't have the sophistication doing the analysis, or as you mentioned earlier, you're dead on. This is one of the biggest problems. The agency recapture the folks that go from the SEC back to private practice and back and forth, or they're they're working for the big banks themselves, and then they find themselves in the top spots. But primarily, it's the folks leaving the SEC that go to get the big deals and the big jobs at these. Wall Street firms, and they have relationships with the people they just left. Well, it, there's got to be a period where they keep these guys out of the industry once they leave government practice. Well, that's right, and there was some suggestion of that, but Obama chose not to do it. Obama was advised, don't, do, don't, don't change the laws here. And understand, Obama is the guy who appoints Eric Holder, and Eric Holder obviously has no interest in going after the people that he's represented for so many years and he just and, and there is no justice here. Look, J.P. Morgan Chase has at least he's he's one of, one of the groups that has been named in the lawsuit by Picard, who's the trustee, and Picard is trying to get back as much money as he can for these people who lost everything. So Picard says that I, I'm at least going to begin this by going after the Wilpon family that they're the owner of the New York Mets and J.P. Morgan, J.P. Morgan Chase. Now, you don't just bring a case like that unless you feel like you have some legs to stand on. You agree with that? I do. Where, so, so where this heads at this point is you have, you have uh, uh, Madoff, who, again, anybody, I mean, L- L- Peter, everybody I've talked to, everybody that has a, any, any opinion on this, that understands the inter, the, the, how the finances of all this work, say that it's impossible for anybody who has looked at just the empirical data and and, and done even a, a basic analysis for could the Madoff plan have been anything but a Ponzi scheme, says it, impossible to come to any other conclusion within a matter of hours. In May of 2001, there was an article in Barron's, 2001, and this is after there were whistleblower submissions to the SEC, 01, where... There was an article whose title is about Bernie Madoff. Don't ask, don't tell. Bernie Madoff is so secretive, he even asks his investors to keep mum. Can you imagine running one of the world's largest hedge funds? And he required that his name not appear in his feeder fund's marketing data. And this was publicly known. It was in Barron's in 2001 that he had average compounded annual returns of 15% or more. Asked what his strategy was. He said it's proprietary. We're a private fund and wouldn't elaborate. Can you imagine getting the opportunity to market yourselves in a, in a place like Barron's or in their marketing material or the feeder funds, and you say, I don't want anybody to say, I don't even want me listed? Yeah. Well, you know what? Th- this, when, when you understand this story, there's a lot of things to be disappointed with with Obama and this administration. But when you understand this story and you understand the, com- the, 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 the cooperation that these thieves and and, and thugs are getting from the Department of Justice and Eric Holder by by there being no activity, it is, it's, it's infuriating.